Make Shack Episode 4. Hello viewers, this week we're starting a longish series about making a new frame for an old sandstone grind wheel I got from a friend. So this is going to be the uh, some of the mortise and tenon work, uh, tenons mostly, and then we'll look a little bit at the overall assembly. I hope you enjoy the series. One of my goals here with these videos is to give you kind of an ambient experience in the shop. Uh, it's a little bit of just sort of working along with me and hanging on, around with me while I work. And uh, also a real-time view of how this work progresses. I may have mentioned before that a lot of what you see in instructional woodworking videos is kind of the perfect takes. Maybe 20 or 30 takes, whatever it whatever they need to get the job done right. And when I was a beginner, that was quite disheartening and dispiriting because I felt like I was never getting work done as fast or as well as they did. So you've probably noticed already that there's just a lot of time of me working and me doing things over, or doing things wrong, or making discoveries as I go. And that's because I'm trying to show you how this really works in my shop, that I do screw things up regularly and sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't so this next set of videos you're going to probably see some pretty big spells of fairly repetitive work things happening over and over again and that is by design and i hope you enjoy it if you don't then you know there's going to be some other videos that i do that are going to be less like that so maybe that'll be more up your alley but anyway welcome aboard and let's uh, get into the work here At this point, I've already cut the cheeks on all of my tenons, and that's fairly straightforward work, typical mortise and tenonry. Uh, it, what I've decided to do here is go in and measure and mark the, the shoulders on the edges. I don't normally do this. I'm not exactly sure why I did this time. I did want to make sure that my shoulders were really nice and straight so that I had good, strong joints, and maybe that's all there was to it. But... Normally what I'll do is I'll just sort of wing this part and just make the vertical cut with my rip saw and then cut the shoulders off. But for whatever reason, we're doing it this way and it ends up looking nice and working well. Uh, there's a fair bit of layout work to be done to make this happen though. I'm super proud of my camera work here, how you can almost see what I'm doing. It's just amazing, right? Just so much anticipation. Will I actually see where that line goes? Oh, so close. Almost. On the upside, we've got plenty of time to look at the tools in my tool rack. You're probably sitting there looking at my crazy square-handled chisels, wondering what's up with that. Maybe someday we'll actually get into those. I think we probably get the idea here. Let's move on. I'll be cutting these joints in the uh, leg vise here. There's not really any other good way to hold these chubby little blocks of wood. I'm using the big old rip saw. Uh, this is not super fine joinery, but I'm still going to be cutting precise lines here. Uh, I'm just going to be cutting them a lot faster with this big aggressive saw.
I'm taking my time at the bottom of this cut to try to get all the way down flush without leaving saw marks in the shoulders. I'd rather not mess it up and make ugly cuts where I can see them. For efficiency, I'll cut all of the same cuts that I can across all of the pieces. Uh, for me, that means uh, cutting the two large ones, and then since I have a, a thinner piece, my vise takes some resetting between thicknesses, so that one's going to have to wait. I'll do all the work on the thick pieces, and then do the thin piece. And this is the last side for this cut. Here I am coming to the realization that my vise needs to be reset and that the efficient way to work is to continue working on the thicker blocks before moving to the thin one. As you can see I don't have this stuff planned out. A lot of times I'm just winging it as I go. This is a nice old cross-cut car uh, carcass saw that I'm using to cut these little shoulders off and uh, leaves a nice clean cut. I'm not uh, scribing or, or cutting the line with a, a knife like you normally would for a shoulder. This is crude work. This is timber work, basically. Uh, if I was doing a nice cabinet piece, I would definitely do that. This, the saw leaves a rough edge and your knife line is going to look infinitely better. But for this job, like I said, it's coarse, so just using the saw is the way to go. So here you can see the offset in this edge. This happened because I marked the block using the four different faces. 
kind of assuming that they were square, not really assuming, but not caring that they weren't. And because this piece of wood wasn't square to begin with, those lines had an offset in them. As it turns out, that huge gap sits right at the top uh, at a very visible spot in my piece of work. So uh, I, I regret that a little bit, but it's woodworking and it's a shop piece. And I have to remember that there's no fine furniture in the shop. Shop stuff needs to be working class material. It doesn't get a fine finish. It doesn't get crazy detail work. It just works and is solid and heavy. So I'm letting that slide. Saying that, that I let it slide. And I guess in these videos I am. I tend to be doing kind of rough and ready work in all of these things so far. Someday I'm going to have to do something nice for one of these videos where I don't let it slide. Just to prove that I can. So all those shoulders are cut, and this is what you end up with. You have a nice relieved shoulder on all four sides of the tenon. That way, once you assemble it, it covers up any of the uh, gaps that there may be in the mortise. And just a nice way of keeping everything looking really extra clean. It's a shame the microphone doesn't accurately pick up the sound of that saw. It's such a fun, guttural, chunky sound as it cuts through. Big teeth that make for a really fun ripsaw noise. I really need to make a space for that saw in the tool chest. I use it way more than the other one that I keep in there.
just need to neaten up here a little bit and make some space so I can do my layout and sort of mock assembly. The piles and piles of little cheek pieces you develop when cutting tenons are maybe the biggest annoyance about the whole thing. They really pile up. <clears throat> this part's kind of nice. It's the first place where you really kind of see what you've been imagining all along. Get to lay things out, get the spacing right, make sure everything matches up. And it's kind of a, a fun thing to see the, the picture in your brain become a physical object on your bench. It's also one of the points where you kind of realize that you may have made an error in your plan as you went along. Originally, I intended this piece to sit in here vertically. It's not structural. All it does is hold the splash plate, but this tenon is so wide, it's going to unnecessarily weaken the frame, and I don't really want that. So... I could cut it down a little bit and make it narrower, or I could just lay it on its side like this. Ultimately, this is what I decide to do. It saves all the strength in the tenon, plus I maintain most of the strength in my uh, frame. And this is really the key to hand tool work is I've made one part and now I'm using that part to lay out the other half. So these tenons are getting marked onto the frames and I will use those marks to cut the mortises. That means the mortise will almost perfectly fit the tenon. It doesn't matter how wide the tenon is. I didn't need to measure it. I don't need to remember that measurement or transfer it anywhere else. I mark it directly from one piece to its mate. And that's how it all works. And I just can't resist taking this opportunity to put the wheel in place, mock up the axle, and just see what it's going to look like. This is also a good opportunity to check some of my assumptions, validate some of the ideas I had, and uh, make sure that what I'm hoping to achieve is actually going to happen. And so far, it's looking good. All right, so let me walk you through it. What we have here is the frame for the uh, grinding wheel laid out. This is the top frame. Obviously this gets legs, uh, but it is made out of two uh, banisters, which I got from a neighbor of mine when he moved. So they have this nice little detail on the front, which makes them look cool. Each banister is separated by one of these little spreaders. These will be uh, mortise and tenon in, as you can see. That's what all the mortise cutting was for. Here's the wheel itself. This is the area in which the wheel sits. These are the bearings here that the axle rides in. Those will get uh, greased, and I'll probably put a, a grease zerk in there so I can keep them greased. <coughs> and that ought to keep them tight and slop-free as well as uh, reduce the friction quite a lot. This is ash. These are oak. Uh, this is probably going to wear quite a bit if I'm not careful with it, but... It's the first one. It's really an experiment. We'll see if it works. Back here is uh, another, it looks like a spreader, but this is actually a platform on which to mount a sheet of steel, uh, which is the spray guard. So the 
two ways to run this. You can run it forwards or backwards. One of them throws water at you. One of them throws water away. There is some conversation that perhaps uh, bringing it towards you is the correct way to do it. And that has mostly to do with the burr on the tool as you sharpen it. I I don't know. I'm I'm not sold on that one. But uh, the guard is nice because it also uh, works as a tool rest. And I'm all about that. And so then there's just another spreader at the back. So in this area here, in this area here will be a seat. And that's where uh, you'll sit while you're running it. Legs will come at the front and the back here. And then there will be some pedals attached to a uh, drive bar on the axle. And uh, that will make it spin. That's really all there is to it. So it looks sturdy enough, that's for sure. I think it'll probably hold the weight of the stone and myself, which is nice. I've taken a little bit of time here off camera to set up for boring the uh, mortises with my uh, drill press. Sometimes I do this and uh, normally it's when I've got a lot of material to remove. This is a inch wide mortise. There's three of them on each post and they're about two and a half, three inches long each. And that's totally choppable, but it's going to take some time and I'm just in a hurry to get this done. So I'm doing it uh, with the drill press. I've got a one inch Forstner bit uh, chucked up here and that's exactly the width of the chisel that I'm using and exactly the width of the chisel I set um, uh, the layout on my tenons with so it's going to make for a nice big uh, mortise. This is a technique I first saw probably from Chris Schwartz. He uses this sometimes to do mortises. Uh, he may have done it in like his Rorky chair video or something. That's probably what it is. I'm sure other people have done it. He's just the guy that I learned, saw it from. So it's just bore, move, bore, move, bore, move. I'm doing lots of uh, heavily overlapped holes so I don't have big chunks sticking out. And uh, I've got a really nice, sharp, nicely cutting Forstner bit here so I don't get a lot of slop or funkiness. A little zoom in here to show you the jig setup. I've just taken a piece of, of wood and I put the uh, newel post where I wanted it to be uh, so that it lined up with the center of the bit and then clamped up a piece of wood. Now I slide the newel post along the piece of wood and it always lines up underneath the drill bit so it saves me a lot of alignment and a lot of uh, stress. I think that's probably from the same video as just using the drill press in the first place so that's a twofer from Chris. Thanks Chris! So this goes on and on. It is literally just the same motion over and over. If you'd like to see the rest of that, hang out after the uh, end credits and you can watch the whole thing. So let's take a look at the end result. This is what you get. Nice, even, regular, uh, flat bottom mortises. They've got the round corners, which need to be chopped out, uh, and otherwise they're pretty good to go. You can use a corner chisel, you can use a bench chisel. I chose the bench chisel for this set. To see me square up these mortises, make sure you join me next time. That'll be the bulk of the work done in the next video, and uh, I enjoy having you come along for that.
in the meantime, I hope you've been enjoying the Make Shack series. If you have ideas or thoughts or questions or comments, make sure to put them down below. And I hope to... I've been working on getting these videos out to you as regularly as possible. Uh, I'm doing it on Friday right now, but the plan is to switch over to a Wednesday release schedule sometime soon. Hopefully I'll get a couple of these in the can so I can actually get them released ahead of time, maybe even schedule some of them. And that will make it a lot easier to adhere to a midweek schedule for me. You're not here for the meta talk though. So let's talk about this series. There's already four of these. It's probably going to take me five, maybe six total to do the whole project. I'm trying to keep the time, uh, the length, the running time of each video in a reasonable frame while also giving you kind of a realistic view of, of how long it's actually taking to do this job. One of the concepts I had when I kind of started this channel was maybe doing different remixes of the videos, having a slightly short, a short, tightly edited version that feels more instructional, a full length, real runtime, hardcore no editing version that shows how the work actually happens with a minimum of talking and then kind of a, a nice conversational version like what I'm trying to focus on now where you just hang out in the shop and we work together for a while. Also, let me know what you think about that down in the comments if you're interested in either of those. So that might be a fun chat. That wraps it up for this week. I am happy to have had you join me. And uh, make sure you check in again next week where we do some mortise chopping. This is Robbie. Thank you for joining me at the Make Shack. You have a great week. Is for
Let's go.